morning. It's uh, 3.30 and um, I have to work at 9 and this is a really long bake. So um, welcome to week 41 of the 2024 baking challenge. It's a uh, cinnamon pumpkin, cinnamon pumpkin swirl rolls, cinnamon swirl pumpkin rolls. There's cinnamon, there's swirls, there's pumpkin, and there's rolls. So ignore the bed head, grab your ingredients, and let's bake. I apologize, it is cinnamon swirl pumpkin rolls. It's early, I'm gonna have to cut me some slack. You can do this by hand, you can do this in a mixer. I'm using my bread machine because I'd like to walk away and go lay down for a little while. It is a four plus hour bake, um, a three and a half, but a lot of that is letting your bread rise because you're gonna have to let your dough rise before you can assemble the rolls and then after you assemble the rolls, they need one more rise before they go into the oven. So just plan ahead for this. And nowhere on the recipe did I see that you could put them in the fridge overnight. So sorry about that. If you're using a bread machine, you're going to put your wet ingredients in first. Okay. If you're not, disregard. We are starting off with one cup of pumpkin puree. So one cup of pumpkin puree going in. Make sure your paddle is in there before you start adding ingredients. I almost did not because I'm sleepy. Um, so, yay. Turns out cats do enjoy pumpkin. And so they all got a little bit of pumpkin this morning. Um, two large eggs. I went ahead, if you have a bread machine, go ahead and scramble your eggs before you put them in. Um, you know, with a mixer, you've got the big paddle or the dough hook and you can eye it and make sure that your eggs are getting mixed up properly. In a bread machine, you really can't do that. And you just have a little tiny paddle. Um, hmm, I know I had water. Oh, there's my water. <laughs> You're going to want two tablespoons to one fourth of a cup of lukewarm water. I'm just going with the one fourth of a cup. If it ends up being a wet dough, I can always add a little bit of flour later, so I will keep an eye on it. Um, and then we need four tablespoons of softened butter, which is exactly what I have here. Um, I accidentally melted it a little, but it's been sitting out long enough while I got everything else out that it should be fine. Okay, let me make sure I'm getting all of that in there because it's needed. All right. Okay. 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 Then we're going to add, then we're going to add the dry ingredients. <clears throat> Sorry. First thing in the morning. It's very early. Um, lots of flour. Now I went ahead and used my kitchen scale to just plop this on here and weigh everything. That way I didn't have to go through measuring cups and all that nonsense, quite honestly. It's too early for that, and I can't even. Um, let me get a dry spatula. So in my cup, I have got, and I'm going to kind of mix this up a little bit. It doesn't really matter. But I have got two and a half cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour. I have got one and three-fourths cups of uh, golden wheat flour. That's 198 grams. A fourth of a cup or 28 grams of uh, dry milk. So I've got that in here. A teaspoon of cinnamon, which in my opinion is not nearly enough, but what do I know? A half a teaspoon of ginger and you have an optional one fourth of a teaspoon of cloves. I went for it because why not? Just whatever. Um, I'm going to put all of that in here. seems like a lot. I just, I know that the pumpkin puree is a wet ingredient and there's a whole cup of that in here, but man, it just ratios are not filling me with confidence. <laughs> also I'm going to have 
three tablespoons of light or dark brown sugar packed. So that's one. That's two. And that's three. All right. Okay. With a bread machine, you're going to make a little divot in your flour for the poofy yeast. Thank you. You also need one and a half teaspoons of table salt, which I did not see until just now. Uh, oh, no. And there are cats everywhere. And usually they clear out, but they are, they are just, they're everywhere. They think it's time to be fed, and it is not time to be fed. All right, what did I say? Two tables, two teaspoons of instant yeast. And you're just going to put your yeast in that little divot there. Um, I'm kind of going with overflowing, which I probably shouldn't. That's okay. All right. For those of you doing this by hand or doing a mixer, you're going to knead, mix until you get a soft, fairly smooth dough. All right. For me, I'm going to lock my pan in place and put it on the dough setting and just walk away so I can go take a little nap. Um, when your dough is done, you're going to put it in a lightly greased bowl and cover it. Walk away for an hour and a half. It should be doubled in size. So you're gonna want a really good rise on this, which leaves me scratching my head because two teaspoons of yeast doesn't seem like enough to me, but whatever. Um, okay, yes. Mix, knead, smooth dough, greased bowl, hour and a half, see you back. <clears throat> okay, it's been an hour and a half, and as you can see, my dough has definitely doubled in size and it even smells good. So I, you know how I am about pumpkin. It's going to be hit or miss, but that's okay. Um, you are going to turn the dough out on a lightly greased surface because my dough was a little on the wet side. I am doing flour. We are going to be rolling this into a 14 by 17 or by 22 um, rectangle. So this is going to get messy. <laughs> all my dough out of there set this over here kitchen's a wreck it's just is what it is today um yeah so you can see my dough is it's tacky it's it's a wet dough because i just tossed the uh all the water in <laughs> that's, that's okay it's fine everything is okay <clears throat> so what did i say 14 by 22. That's big. It's pretty much almost the size of this mat. So that's okay. We can do that. It's just going to take a little bit. And it needs to be a rectangle, which is disappointing because, you know, I struggle with shapes. Um, I'm going to get my other rolling pin. This one is just not, not going to cut it. Work smarter, not harder. I know this rolling pin is smaller, but it's also heavier. So I don't have to put as much energy into it. <clears throat> Um, before you can, now you can make the filling either before or after you can buy the filling. King Arthur has it. Um, I don't think it's necessary. It's, uh, three fourths of a cup of granulated sugar and a tablespoon of cinnamon. Although if you like cinnamon the way that I like cinnamon, you're going to use a little bit more than that and that's okay. <laughs> All right. I am almost there. This is actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So... Okay. Oh, hello. 
<clears throat> okay, Whew. there we go. Do, 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 do. Da, 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 da. It says the dough will be thin. My dough really doesn't seem that thin. Um, what do you, maybe I should roll it a little more. You know what, now I'm just gonna, my cinnamon rolls are just gonna be a little thick. That's okay. Okay, <sighs> roll it 14 by 22 rectangle. Mix your cinnamon. If you're using a pre-made, the, uh, the King Arthur Baker cinnamon filling mix, then you'll need to add um, water to it. If you're not using that, if you're doing the three fourths of a cup and one tablespoon of ground cinnamon or, you know, more than that, you can not add the water. So, so don't do that. But what we are going to do is spread a thin layer over the dough, leaving one short edge free of filling. So, um, forget sprinkling. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna dump it. <laughs> This is messy, um, a little messy, that's okay. It's okay, there we go, let's <laughs> just use the whole thing. I have never made cinnamon rolls before, so this is completely new to me. Um, I love cinnamon rolls, but I've always just, you know, made the refrigerated kind, which is fine. I am a little concerned about how the sugar is gonna stay on here when we start to roll. Okay, at this point, you have some decisions to make. You can sprinkle this with um, crystallized ginger or dried fruit, like raisins or cranberries. I'm not gonna do any of that. Not doing it. Start with the short end that's covered with filling and roll the dough into a log. Here we go. So far, so good. This is not, it's not what I would call difficult. Need some more filling up in here though. This is gonna be such a pain to clean up today. Once you get it started, it's pretty easy just to just to roll. Okay. Um, I'm going to press to kind of seal my end in place here. I'm assuming that's why we didn't put our filling on it. Okay. Cut the log into nine rolls. We're doing one and a half inch slices. So having your ruler out could come in handy. You are going to want to grease your pan first. A nine by nine glass pan. I'm supposed to fit nine of these rolls in here. Okay. Said lightly grease, that was probably a little excessive. Um, yeah, okay. What did I say? Half one and a half inch. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut my ends off because I have a feeling that I have more than I'm gonna need. Um, so I'm just gonna cut it so my ends are even. If you are cutting on your rolling surface, like a rolling mat, make sure you're not cutting through your rolling mat. Okay, here we go. What did I say? One and a half inch. So there, there, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Okay. So you're going to take your rolls and put them on end in your baking dish. So rolled side up. And you're really going to have to kind of mush them in there because nine by nine is not, that's not that big. So you're going to have to get three rows of three in here. And it's going to be a little tricky. So these do smell really good. Um, I skeptical about the pumpkin, but I did add more cinnamon than the filling recipe called for. I probably doubled it. I probably did like two tablespoons of cinnamon. I like cinnamon. Um, oh my gosh, getting these to fit in here is definitely going to be an issue. Um, so I'm glad I cut my ends off because there's no way they were going to fit in here. These are not going to be pretty cinnamon rolls and that's okay. Not everything has to be pretty as long as it's tasty, right? Ooh. How am I going to, how am I going to fit? You know what? I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to fit this in here. Um, we're just going to, we're just going to wedge it in there. Okay. There's my cinnamon rolls. Now, what you're gonna do is you're going to set those aside and you're gonna let it rise for an hour, okay? The rolls are gonna look puffy, they're not gonna double in size. So cover it, set a timer for an hour. Um, about 15, 20 minutes, you're gonna pre, before that hour is up, you're gonna go ahead and preheat your oven to 375. So I will see you back in an hour. So we had a little bit of an interesting development during this um, rise in the pan. I walked into the kitchen, there was still, I think like 12 minutes left on the rise. And I looked at the counter and my towel was just sticking up and I thought, oh no, that's, that's not okay. So this roll that's no longer there because I had to take it out was sticking up probably almost three inches off the top of the pan. Um, I mean, you can tell these are just, <laughs> so I went ahead and my oven is done. I'm going to stick these in and cross my fingers. These are going to go into the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. Um, they should be nice and uh, brown and set when they're done. You're going to pull them out of the oven and you're going to wait about 15 minutes. Let them cool 15 minutes. And then towards the end of that 15 minutes, we're going to make the glaze. So make sure you have everything ready to go for that. And I will see you back at that time. So I had some mixed results with the baking. Uh, a little well done. I put mine in for 30 minutes total. I did not check them. It's fine though, everything is cooked well. Um, to make the glaze, you need a half of one cup of powdered sugar, you need a tablespoon of butter, and um, a tablespoon and a half of milk. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna heat up that butter and that milk together. Um, the easy way to do this would be in on the stove. Um, I don't have time for that. <laughs> So it's going, I started to, I started to melt my butter a little bit in the microwave and now I'm just going to, I added the milk and now I think another 30 seconds should do the trick to heat up both. So 
sorry, this is a chaotic bake today. Um, it just is what it is. Um, and you're going to, once that's um, melted together, you're going to get it good and mixed up. You're going to add it into the sugar with a whisk. I'm just gonna use a spoon. You are supposed to take these out of the pan. I, I did not do that, honestly. It's okay though, everything's fine. Oh yeah, that, that milk mixture is good and frothy and mixy. And, and now we're just gonna add it to our sugar. Add it to the sugar, get it good and mixed up. You could do like a cream cheese um, frosting on these as well, I think. I think that would, I think that would be nice too. Um, it is going to be a, a thicker consistency. Try to get all your lumps out. I did kind of add a little more sugar because it just came out really fast. That's okay. That's okay. This is pretty much the perfect consistency as far as I'm concerned. Now you're just going to drizzle that over your cinnamon rolls, cinnamon swirl pumpkin rolls. So I will be using the entire amount. Um, obviously it'll look prettier if they're not all wedged in the, um, in the pan, but this is, this is what I have time for today. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. We're fine. Um, I did have some separation in my rolls, so I'm trying to make sure that I get the frosting kind of down in there because yum. And like I said, I'm going to use all of it. So that's, these smell really good. I'm very excited about trying these. Just going to throw that there. Okay, next up, let me clean up the kitchen a little bit and then let's try them and see how they turned out. <laughs> okay, keeping in mind that I love cinnamon rolls, but pumpkin has never been a favorite of mine. Let's give it a try. I think I need one more bite. This is good. <laughs> okay. So the wheat flour gives it that extra boost in flavor and gives it an interesting texture. The pumpkin is not overwhelming. It's just a hint. You get the cinnamon and the ginger and the cloves. Um, the cloves give it obviously a heavier flavor. So if you don't want something quite as heavy, don't do the cloves. The icing is nice and light and sweet. And all together, it's a really good bake. I'm, I'm a fan of the cinnamon swirl pumpkin rolls. <laughs> well, that is it for this week's bake. I hope you had the chance to bake along. I'm very sorry that I did not get you the ingredient list until Friday. Um, very hectic week at work. So um, I hope that you hit the subscribe button below. I put out one of these every single Saturday morning. Next weekend, we're going super easy. Like the entire recipe from start to finish is like 30 minutes and you don't even need flour. Fingers crossed this turns out really good because um, the kiddo picked it. So looking forward to that. You can also go over to the Facebook page to follow along. Usually on Wednesdays or Thursdays, I post the ingredient list for what we will be making that weekend. That way you can decide if you would like to bake along or not and get your shopping done on time. Um, I'm going to go clean up this mess of the kitchen and uh, get to work because I'm running out of time and I will see you next weekend.